This is Crash TV. Okay, hello everyone and welcome to episode 38 of the Crash FM podcast and episode 4 of uh, Crash TV. Um, we're going to give you an overview this week on what's been going on in Criterion Games. My name's Matt. My name's Matt. And I'm Simes. Today on Crash TV. We bring you the latest news on Codename Cagney. Matt tells us about the visual effects and how the controls are developing for Burnout Paradise PC. We meet Mikel from the car team and look into the creation of the Hunter Olympus. And of course, we get all the very latest from the mailbag. That's what's coming up real soon. Uh, we're going to move on to update on Codename Cagney. Coming soon. Codename Cagney. Okay, here we go then. An update on Codename Cagney. So, if you don't already know, this is coming to you on July the 10th. So, what, five, five and a bit days? Five and a bit days, yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. Very right. exciting. Uh, we've received uh, approval on a number of platforms already. Uh, it's just waiting for a few more to come through, and then we'll know for certain that it's going to come on the uh, 10th of July. So, not long to wait. We've already covered in previous episodes of uh, Crash TV what exactly the content is going to be. So... Big headline features, new game modes, loads of new challenges, um, and uh, a suite of new supporting features. We covered a lot of those last week, didn't we? Absolutely. And also, actually, if you go back over the past few weeks on the site, you've seen that we've covered all of the major game modes with lots of videos. We've also covered um, all of the time challenges stuff. This week, it's been cars on the website. So we're all sort of filling it out. So we've only got really a few little supporting features we've probably not talked about. No, that's right. So if you want to catch up on exactly the details on exactly what what is coming, you can uh, obviously go to Criterion games.com uh, you can subscribe to crash TV via iTunes and uh, and uh, see what we've been up to over the course of the last year through the uh, crash FM, FM podcasts um, so just to cover off you know what we're talking about what we call the supporting features I suppose so uh, for those that you uh, of you that have obviously been uh, staying tuned in particularly with uh, the free burn challenges in the game you'll know that uh, we've made some changes um, to how the system works. Uh, one of the ones that we covered last week was obviously uh, when people leave challenges, uh, it can it can cancel them. So Cagney helps that uh, by you know not cancelling the mm. challenge when a player leaves. So it sort of softens the exit. So if you're in an eight-player challenge and and somebody drops out, then it doesn't close it down for everybody. So I think you're all going to see the benefits of that. And one of the things that we've done. Um, uh, with regards to not just challenges mm. but free burn game modes um, we've detailed when you get a, pl uh, a list of games yeah. that are running when you go searching we've detailed what those players have been doing mm. which is really really helpful actually because it is that thing of you go into a challenge room and you think right okay I'm going to finish off my 350 challenges and everybody's just chasing one another around or you end up in a race and you don't want to so being able to actually pick out and see how that uh, yes. what, what to expect it's going to be very better. very useful especially so, as there, more, there are those more game modes I think people are going to want to specialise in a free burn game mode or a challenge or a race yes really so that, that's exactly what happens and so you'll see uh, as, uh, on your search results Screen when you're when you're looking for a game, you'll see whether they've been racing. You'll see whether they've been doing free burn road rage or or, or marked man. One of our new events is that are coming in Cagney, or indeed if they've just been doing challenges. So um, I'm sure everyone's going to find that extremely useful for just picking what people want to do or what players are doing yeah. at any one time. I know, I know it's it's a uh, mm. it's sometimes I've been into rooms and you know I just want to go race and actually people are doing challenges yeah. or, or actually on the mm. flip side. It's an easy drive is about getting into the the game and playing the game you want as quickly as possible and that's only going to help. That's abso all. absolutely right. Mm. And also the other one as well actually is that when you actually uh, play online, often there's the opportunity to play online with friends or guys that you probably met on the forum and stuff like that kind of thing and everybody kind of gets where you're coming from and, and stuff but just dropping into a random room when you're first new to burn out or something like that I think that's going to just take the edge off mm. there absolutely I think cool. more people were hosting as well because they specifically wanted to play a certain game mode and that was spread thin the number of players so now people can find what they want mm. Less hosts, more people in rooms together. They yeah, fill up quicker. For sure, it's a, it's a really important uh, update for us. So um, that's uh, going to help uh, Freebird. Now the other uh, side of, uh, of the coin, if you like, is uh, is racing or competition racing, particularly ranked racing. So we spoke about this with uh, Professor Follett last week. <laughs> <laughs> Always talking about ranked racing. Uh, our, our, the rating systems uh, or the scoring, the underlying scoring system in. Um, 
uh, in ranked races is changing and actually it's, it's gone live this week nice. so um, if you want some more information on that you can go to criteriongames.com and have a look at the blog post or of course go back to previous versions of uh, or previous episodes of Crash TV which you can subscribe to via iTunes to get the de- detail on that but a few of the other uh, supporting features that we've done with regards to races um, I think you I think you're all going to like. So one of the one of the ones that's close to me is the fact that you can now see damage of other players mm. uh, o- online. So um, many times I've rolled up uh, with a battered mm. old cavalry, and of course no one gets to see that. But uh, we managed to use the time in between um, Bogart, codename Bogart, mm. and codename Cagney to just make a couple of tweaks there. So you get to see the various beaten up states of uh, the cars that are rolling up on the on the start also, line. It also makes you feel a little bit sort of better about the fact that your car's mangled and everybody else is pristine. So. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so uh, that's a fun one for me. But more importantly, for some other people um, we've increased the timeout so one of the things that you'll find if you're racing against somebody who you know is leading the pack and uh, finishes the race um, it used to be over and lots of people were seeing did not finish and we kind of didn't like that so much so we've increased the amount of time that you get to actually finish the race so you can experience what it's like to you know get to the closing stages and, and cross the finishing line even if it is in fifth sixth yeah, seventh yeah eight. it helps people learn a race as well if you're if you're just starting out and you're in a race and the experts they know it they'll rush through it and you're you're only a third of the way through you don't even get a chance to race the full route yeah so you, you, how are you going to learn it you're not going to learn it if you finish the third every time you learn <laughs> that first third really well but <laughs> that's absolutely right so we're giving more more people the opportunity to actually finish a race and you know and the, the course makes you feel good yeah so um, that's a that's a cool change that's coming in uh, Cagney. So just what what do we say? Five and a half days to wait. Absolutely, yes, indeed. Uh, so th- and then for you know for for some of the um, the other more intricate races that you see, we've made some changes to uh, make the navigation system a little bit more reliable, if you like. You know, we noticed that of course in in Paradise, there's many different routes that you can take from the start to a finish point, and sometimes that nav system would be. A little bit creepy. It has to on the fly update. If you take, if you don't follow it, then it's got to create a new route for you, and sometimes could cause a few problems. Yeah, many but a time I've, I've taken the wrong turn. So that thing's a lot more reliable. Um, and in particular, races that we notice the races that use the tunnel, it would get pretty confused. Yeah, about. I think that has to do with the uh, split lanes. Uh, oh, that's why it's very really complicated junctions. If you were to look at how it's built, it's very complicated. That I've read, there's a lot of roads all meeting. That's right. Place. That's right, and and also the uh, the Lawrence Tunnel is a, a very popular route for rapidly getting yeah. from uh, east to west or vice versa, yes. obviously. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's a lot more reliable. Um, so you'll be able to you know make those turns and uh, and get a get a greater handle on the best routes to the finishing line. Um, and in addition to that, we've made some you know that sort of giving us some a better results when you want to know exactly where a player is in front of you or behind you. Sometimes that would go a bit screwy. Mm-hmm. So lots of changes in and around the. Um, navigation system also when you wreck we've uh, fixed up a lot of uh, reset points right that's something that you've been looking at um i had been yeah I mean, it was passed on to dave actually i think dave did a lot of those i can't remember how many it was almost a hundred yeah there's resets. an awful lot yeah so just yeah. to that give you was... some uh, background on there what a reset is is when you crash in a race if you crash we want to put you back on a road facing the way that you should be going and sometimes yeah. there was some Weird things going on where they had many, you. many mails to the mailbag as well, kind of thing. Saying I, I was in this thing and I, I turned up and I ended up in a tree <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. And it's wonderful that we kind of got all those things mailed. So. Absolutely. So a big chunk of uh, fixes uh, that are coming um, in Codename Cagney for those people who love competition racing. Mm-hmm. So our next feature is on Burnout Paradise PC. So we're mm-hmm. going to give you an update on what's been going on in the studio this week. Coming soon. Burnout PC. Okay, so here's our regular feature on what's been going on this week with the Burnout Paradise PC team. So, Matt, yeah. give us the skinny. Well, okay, Burnout Paradise on PC. First Burnout on PC, in fact. That's right. And it's going to be Burnout Paradise. So we're taking everything that you guys are doing on the console that's already in there, the game you know and love, and we're bringing it onto the PC. So we've got Cagney already on the PC up and running we've getting bits of Davis as they're being built and beyond they're all coming onto the PC that's right you spoke about the bikes last week didn't you yeah so we're obviously doing all that keeping on track with that but we're also doing some stuff we have to do on PC some Mm. unique PC features and we've shown them before the controller screens the video screens and we've got all those in game and part of building the game you try things out you review them and then you find out what does and doesn't work, mm. what could be improved. It's, it's a process of iteration. 
That's right. That's, it's, a, it's a big word for us. It's it a is. very important word for us. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, that, and, yeah, so, as you said, it's get something in, try it, see how it feels, make it better, and that's a process that we call iteration. Yeah. So what have you been iterating on? So the control screens, we got we got right. those in and running. You've probably seen this with guitar, which was great fun, but it was actually a great learning process as well. Obviously, you might not realise, but on the guitar, left and right on the the frets is actually a digital steering. Right. So you don't have that on console. It is an analog stick. Mm-hmm. We're using digital, so it's a learning process there. So, going forward from that, we want to support other analog devices that might not handle in the same way as the console stick. So, right. wheels, for example, joysticks, how they're going to work. We're going to be adding that support into the game and allowing the player to tweak the sensitivity, the dead zones, force feedback. Oh, okay, that's great. Just so they handle exactly how the player wants them. No two. You know, one wheel will handle. What, what, what's the, what's the dead zone in a, a dead in a zone? Controller. So, imagine you've got your wheel. Yeah, and it's when it's in the middle. It's if it's not right in the middle, it's either left or right. Okay, and that can be really hard if you're on the wheel and you're trying to go straight. It's like no, I'm a bit left. So you're correcting yourself, and you can never actually go straight. If you have uh, a okay. dead zone, you're effectively saying the middle point is quite big. It's bigger than this point, Understand. and it means you have to steer a bit more to go left. And there's like a little gap. It's like less, wow. less like balancing yeah. a ruler on your finger, where all of a sudden you can just slowly veer off. It yeah. really is a case of you've got that. It's really important. To... So, do you think maybe we'll have a, a, a Crash TV spotlight with Professor Follett doing a, a whole segment just on dead zones and sensitivities? Maybe. <laughs> I'm, I'm very proud of that screen. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll bring the bring the camera. But as I say, we're gonna we're gonna be getting that in there, and we'll probably look at it and see what works and what doesn't work. And obviously, on PC, I might have I might have lots of different controllers so that I might. Yeah. You know, chop and change so there's their ability to multiple controllers something you want to add to it so mm. we're thinking people might play with a 360 pad they might also have a wheel got them both plugged in at the same time currently you could probably map the acceleration on a pedal or <laughs> on the right trigger oh ok so you could mix and match controllers you could but that's, I don't think that's such a good thing right. I'd like to actually have accelerate on both so I could be either the pedal or this so depending could, on yeah. You know, so depending on my state something. of mind that particular yeah. session do I want to pick up my pad or my steering wheel who knows well, if, I've, if I've set them both up and I only have one plugged in it will still remember that that's, I can play with just one controller great I think that's going to be really important and saving those configs so we will have a save yeah. feature absolutely yes and provide defaults for them so we're going to try as many controllers as we can and I mean, I'm hoping that most people won't have to go into this screen that no. I've spent <laughs> put weeks my life on. creating but I've succeeded if you never I'm, go into that screen and you can just plug your controller in and you can play Burnout. And it feels great. It feels great, yeah. But if they do end up going there, it's going to be the most awesome config setup screen ever. Of course. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm very proud of it, yeah. Mm. Another one, so video settings. I've right. probably showed that before. Had oh, three yeah. columns, um, device settings, quality settings, and effects settings. Mm-hmm. Now, we've actually got a few more effects, which ah. means we can't show them in that space. We've run out of space. We've had to rethink how we've position everything and that's one of the problems also when you're when you're you know going through uh you know game development is that you'll you'll, you'll create something and then suddenly you'll you know you'll have had new game ideas or new features coming in and and suddenly that original design yeah. needs to change you can't you've got to iterate it, it right you have to iterate yes <laughs> so so how, what, what have you done on the video screen so we've actually looked at another screen that's already in game the mm-hmm. the driver detail screen where you've got your license records oh that's and right, discoverables yeah. They are three headings, exactly the same place. Mm-hmm. Where the number, uh, where the license was, that's now our, our like picture. Oh, right. Do you remember that was the picture with the that's update? Right. And you wanted to preview sessions. it, didn't yeah. you? So exactly the same place. And on the, on the right are all the settings. So if you're on device, you'll have the resolution, the monitors. You move down to um, effects, you'll have the motion blur and all these other cool things we're setting up. Ooh. So we're, we're going to mimic a screen that's already in-game. That's, that's important so what are the, as well. what are the new effects that you've got in there? Are you able to talk about those? Yeah, I, I think we are. We've um, Dardo's been working very hard over the last couple of weeks at adding to the and enhancing what's already in the game. So he's been looking at shadows and adding smooth shadows. Right. Sounds exciting, doesn't Ooh, it? Oh, smooth shadows. If you were to look <laughs> at a shadow in real life, mm-hmm. it's not a clearly defined edge. It's normally a... Clearly to find edge with another softer shadow around the edge. Ah, it helps old... Bonus points for what's that called? Oh, it's the old an umbra and penumbra. Ah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I remember my level of physics. So that helps to make it a much more stable image mm. and believable image. Um, but also, he's been looking at the road shaders, and these are really exciting. Mm-hmm. You should be able to see these. Mm-hmm. That 
on the roads, he's managed to pick out the cracks in the road. It's like it's, it's to do the normal maps. Oh, it's cool. quite another one, isn't it? Maybe getting too technical. Yeah. Maybe we'll <laughs> put that on the website, <laughs> Professor Follett. I think you need to look at it to see see the effects. Okay. And that's what we, so we've added those. Well, as I suppose well. the thing is, the great thing is that more detail on the roads, more realism, and also means that when that road's screaming at you at goodness knows how many miles an hour, it's giving you that great sense of speed and, and distance and stuff. So it probably all adds up. It, it looks greater when you're not moving. But ah, it looks even greater. When you're not, oh, yes, then you get to see all the detail. Yeah. When you are moving, that's mm -hmm. when we have motion blur effects. So previously on console, motion blur was just on the bumper cam, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but now on PC we're unable, uh, able. To to turn it on throughout All the, the time. game. So in third person, Whoa. motion blur, wow. it looks amazing. That's great. So not only are you iterating in the design features that you've already done, you're uh, obviously mm. taking Paradise further by uh, building on from the features that we've released in the, uh, in yeah, the console I'm, game first. I'm hoping that some of these features will come back into the console. Well, that's the intention with multi-platform development, isn't it? It so is. That's good. So what are we going to see next week? What are you working on? So another big one for us was the map screen. We feel that on a PC... Mouse control the map feels right. Dragging the map, dragging the map around, clicking right. on locations, so find out what a race is. On custom drives as well, actually building custom drives using the mouse should be Ooh. a lot easier than it is now on console. Well, that's one of the benefits to the to the mouse, on, in particular on a screen like that. We struggled on console to did. get that working well. It is a difficult screen looking at. Great. So, uh, well, we look forward to seeing that uh, in uh, next in next week. week's update. So, uh, thanks a lot, Matt. So, our next area that we're going to be looking to at is a spotlight feature. Mm -hmm. Crash TV Spotlight, the car team. Okay, so we've taken out of the podcast room uh, again for another week, and here we are on the car team. We're going to talk to the guys about the creation of the Hunter Olympus for Codename Cagney. Hi, I'm Michael. Uh, welcome to the car team today. I'm going to show you how we made one of the vehicles coming in the next burnout update, the Hunter Olympus. We thought like it would be great to have a vehicle we can check in traffic, uh, like almost all traffic, except big rigs like buses. And whatever than a, a big American like 4x4 uh, to do so. So at first what you, what you see are uh, body panel so it's very very similar to a real car you get body work so this is the first thing everybody will see body works wheels how's the, what the body works look like and how the wheel match body work but there is something else about burnout it's that you can crash your car and the car needs to be great even when you crash like that reveals everything inside what we call the guts of the car so, for example, on, if I open the bonnet, you can see that even without the bonnet, the car is very interesting. We have a massive engine, as you will expect in that kind of vehicle, and that engine is protected by a tubular chassis. So, it's really it's like you would do in real life. It's like we, we protect the engine from impact, we have suspension front and rear. So I'm gonna show you those. So front suspension with front differential. So you can see that's a gearbox. Gearbox is linked to the front differential. And we have a rear differential. You can see the way here <coughs> and link to rear suspension. Front and rear suspension are, are different. This is very straight and clean geometry. In game things will be uh, bended according to your crash about what you do so things never look that pretty in game uh, of course. Now you can really appreciate the level of detail we, we add to your car. So, hi, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed uh, what the car team are working on. It's pretty exciting, if you ask me. Uh, we're going to move into another spotlight feature here on Crash TV now. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, the calendar. Mm -hmm. So, one of the things you're going to be seeing when uh, Codename Cagney arrives in five and a half days' time, you're going to be seeing a calendar screen. And that's well, on your live front page, which is the, the way that we can talk 
directly to you and tell you all the cool stuff that's happening in and around the world of Burnout Paradise. The calendar is particularly important. And here, Simes and I got together and we spoke about it earlier on in mm -hmm. the week. And uh, this is the lowdown. Crash TV Spotlight. Game calendar. Okay, so we're here in the Capture Studio, and um, it's uh, July the 10th, Matt. Yep. I've loaded up my uh, copy of Burnout. I've down downloaded Codename Cagney for free. Yep. I see the game calendar. What's it all about? Okay, let's go. Right. Here I am in my Rossellini, and uh, I'm going to decide to go and have a, a look at the news from Criterion Games. So I can go onto Easy Drive, I select News. Uh, there's also another way I can do it. I can hit Pause and go to News, and we go to the live front page and this is our mechanism of talking directly to the players that are online in the game and as you can see I've got a quick story up there talking about Crash TV episode 4 live demonstration um, so first of all we're going to talk very briefly about this page so um, as I've just said we are able to talk directly to you and I'll show you what we can, we can do here so if I come out of the game and uh, this is uh, obviously Criterion Games in here we can uh, just go and quickly write something uh, so you can see how live it is. It's a live demonstration, demonstration of the live front page. Uh, and then we uh, update and deploy, and it's as simple as that. And so uh, once Picture Paradise goes away, I use the other mechanism for going to Paradise News, press start, then press X, go directly to Paradise News, and our live front page boots up and it goes and searches for uh, any updates from criteriongames.com and in a moment it's going to come up and show you exactly what it is was that I just typed. So here you can see Crash TV episode 4 live demonstration and I've added that second sentence here to the live demonstration of the live front page. So brilliant. We can now talk directly to you and update it uh, many times during the day. So the other critical part of the live front page is the game calendar or the calendar on the left hand side of the screen. So uh, as you can see right now the Wednesday the 2nd of July is ringed because it was my birthday. Uh, but today is the 3rd of July and um, I'm going to now show you how we can change those events. So I come out of the game and I can very quickly just go and ring some events. So we're going to remove the 2nd of July we're going to uh, add some other dates in here just very quickly. We're going to add the uh, 21st of July 2008 and we're going to add um, the 10th of July 2008 because that is of course when Cagney is going to be available on your uh, consoles and I think that we'll, well, let's add the 18th as well. Uh, very quickly, very simple for us. And then what this is going to do, we just deploy to test. We come back into here, fire up the news using uh, using the start page as a, as a route in. And again, as I come to that page, we're downloading. Now it's a little bit slower than what you'll get uh, at home because it's uh, running through our test servers at the moment. Because uh, obviously I don't want to be deploying this information live just yet. And uh, as the front page goes and downloads this news information, you can see that the dates that I've just uh, identified there as important, the 10th, the 18th, and the 21st of July, are now ringed to draw your attention to the fact that we will be running some events on those days. So if you, if you don't, obviously, clearly, you don't know exactly what we're talking about on those dates, but we'll have a particular news story to say, right, 10th of, the, 10th of July, Cagney's live. 18th of July, something is going to happen, same as the 21st. So for each date that we ring on the calendar, we'll have an associated story with it telling you exactly what's going on. So what is going to be going on? This is all about broadcasting gameplay. So we're able to say to you, on the 10th of July, Cagney's launched. Perhaps, if we deem it fit, you can all get to drive the Hunter Olympus. And perhaps, if you do a particular something in the Hunter Olympus, you get it for good. That's example number one. Another example might be on the weekend of the 18th, or the Friday the 18th of July, the date that I bring there, we'll have a news story in here saying, today it's Rossellini only day, perhaps, on ranked racing and unranked racing. So we have, this op we have the ability now, not only to talk directly to you, 
but to tell you of particular things that are coming in the future where we'll get to change the gameplay that you're going to be experiencing in Paradise City. So, calendar events, driven by the calendar, broadcasting gameplay directly to you and changing it, potentially even daily. So, we've got a whole heap of great ideas of things that we can do uh, to mix and match the experiences that you're going to be having in Paradise City once uh, Cagney comes out uh, onto your consoles. Um, I've given you a little hint there of something we'll be doing with the Hunter Olympus. Um, later on uh, next week we're going to be bringing to you the first set of specific events that we're going to be broadcasting to you throughout the first week or so of Cagney's release. Um, and we're going to be giving you the specific details of the events that we're going to be running. So watch out, there's events coming. Your participation in those events is going to be required for you to win some things, which we're going to tell you very soon. Uh, and we just want to be able to mix and match your experiences in Paradise City on particular dates. So when you get Cagney, boot it out, check it out the calendar screen for the ringed events, look for the associated news story that comes with it, and uh, be prepared for some surprises. So there it is, the live front page, and it's going to be with you in just a few days' time. So, July the 10th, we're rolling on broadcasting events then? Absolutely. There you go. Mailbag at CriterionGames.com ah, Welcome back uh, to episode 4 of Crash TV. Hope you enjoyed that feature. And uh, here we are, we're going to move on. Simes is going to give us an update on everything that's been going on in the community this week. Mm -hmm. Right, well first of all, uh, we have a look at the podcast. The video podcast that we've been putting together and everybody's been bearing with us over the, the sort of like uh, first few weeks as we were truly iterating from six guys setting, sat sweating on a sofa for 45 minutes to this wonderful kind of like... Um, all singing 16 to 9, quick time, everything. Oh, the amount of stuff I've learned about video production in, in a very short space of time <laughs> is quite spectacular. I still but, can't believe it's just you that's done all that. <laughs> yeah. an amazing job. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, Thursday night through to Friday was quite interesting. I actually did uh, did do a 36-hour run, and we Ooh. got it all out. <laughs> lots of lots of coffee, but it was worth it, because uh, the great news was was that over the weekend we became number one podcast in the UK on iTunes in the Games and Hobbies section. woo so, Exactly, and it's a real... <laughs> big woohoo so I was when I came in on Monday morning and found that out it was just totally worth it and fantastic and uh, really highlights for us you know kind of thing what we're, what we're doing because we came in ahead of, of like the BBC you know, they're producing big podcasts and it's us guys <laughs> in a room with a camera and some uh, some Adobe Premiere. Oh, we actually. Did that. I, mean, I think I think it's it's really interesting. Mm. We started this you know well over a year ago yes. now. August the twelfth was the first audio. August podcast. the twelfth. Oh, okay, wow. very nearly a year. So mm. uh, we did a lot. We learnt a lot on uh, audio podcasts, and mm. you know it was really fascinating for us to be talking about uh, the you know the inner inner workings, if you like, of game development. And, and normally we wouldn't ever talk about the games that in this sort of phase of development mm. but we think it's you know vital way to talk mm. to the community yeah. and so this sort of metamorphosizing from mm. an audio podcast to a TV podcast yeah. is which uh, we've been iterating in yeah. the same way as we do <laughs> all of the game go, theory as well <laughs> you know trying it out see what works making it better so one of the things actually that uh, big kind of news we've had such success with the audio uh, with the video podcast and actually I've got a little little comment that came through to the mailbag the other day from, from our old friend Toxic Burner one of the guys who's on the forums here uh saying that um, when did you get so funny during the video podcast I spit pop out twice <laughs> thanks I'm still cleaning the screen so that was really great so uh yeah, so if we can kind of, kind of get it, get it, get even, uh, you know, so that even more reactions like that, that'd be great. Well, I think it's critical for, mm. you know, I mean, we obviously moving from audio to video, we can mm. show people in a much better quality the how good the game looks. Yeah. You know, all the features that we're working on, you can get a, you know, mm. a much better view of what's going on inside the studio. Can't yeah, you? exactly. And one of the things that we've seen over the uh, course of the past couple of weeks, we've been able to show exclusive footage on the podcast, which has been great because we've had a look at the island exclusively. We've also had a look at bikes night and one of the things we want to do is actually move more into video I mean it's working for us everybody's really digging it um, so a couple of things that we're doing is we're going to be phasing out the audio podcast so <laughs> next week is going to be the last audio podcast we're going to do and we're going to move into this video format completely so that's going to be a big thing it means that what we can do is spend a lot more time working on um, video features um, audio um, uh, listeners 
um, last week actually had to had to have a, a little section of the uh, podcast cut out because we'd spend a lot of time talking about the guitar controllers on the PC. Mm. And it's like the more video stuff we get, the the harder it gets to to, to keep up the quality of the audio podcast. Also, the other thing as well is that. Um, uh, iTunes is very, very important for us. So uh, one of the things is that iTunes gives us a great way to touch as many people as possible and it allows us to track the numbers of subscribers. And the more subscribers we get, the more we can do with a podcast, the more we can support it, and that's really great for us. So one of the things we're going to be doing is closing down the FeedBurner RSS feeds and moving everything over to iTunes. So we know that there are a few guys out there that have been using all sorts of different routes to get to the podcast but please can you bear with us and come along with us and join us on iTunes because um, it's really huge for us uh, when we get those numbers when we start appearing in those iTunes charts uh, everybody gets to uh, take notice and see more about what we're doing so that's a absolutely and having, having one route into this particular mm. world of Crash TV um, exactly. I think is really, you know, simple, very simple and, you know, yeah. pretty, and really important to us also means that we can keep the quality up because of course the other thing as well is that when not having to try and balance an audio podcast and a video podcast at the same time. We're just dealing with one thing and then we're putting it out. Cool, so, that's exciting. Go. So next next week, last audio podcast from then on, it's all video. Brilliant. And you can also access any of the previous Crash TV podcasts. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yes indeed. So yeah, you can go, go back if you from did, there. If you were just listening to them, you can download them and watch them. That's right, yeah. So you can go back to iTunes, you can uh, cr- type in uh, Crash TV or Crash FM. You can obviously subscribe to us there. Uh, and download previous versions so you know uh, if you want to get uh, some greater detail on some of the things that we've, we've referenced today or spoken about on the criteriongames.com head over there download some of those uh, early uh, early earlier podcasts or uh, some of the, uh, the the first versions you can see how we've changed hopefully we've gotten better uh, but more importantly you'll get an idea of um, uh, some of the more some of the detail that we've spoken about and actually how things like uh, Cagney have progressed from mm. start to finish is kind of interesting Absolutely, to see yeah, what we is. were talking about mm. a number of months ago to uh, actually being very, you know just what five and a half days away yeah right so to the mailbag itself aha uh-huh. Right, we've got some questions, we've got some uh, postcards. We want postcards or questions first? Oh, I think we should do some questions. Okay, questions, right. Here we go. Righto. This one from Maria Polanco, which says, I need to know if the updates will take up lots of hard disk space on the PS3. Ah, okay. So, um, for those, so the way the system works is uh, on PS3, um, anyway, is uh, you'll just put your Burnout Paradise uh, disk in the drive. Um, the servers will quickly tell you that there's an update available for the game and would you like to install it and uh, it's kind of that easy we're expecting codename Cagney to be come in at around 400 megabytes so uh, what are the hard drives 20 or 60 gig are they on uh, yeah I think if I recall so uh, probably not going to take up up too much space and and obviously if you you know if you've got a ton of stuff on your PS3 then um, uh, then the Sony system will tell you whether you need to uh, make some space available but for it. But it'll be worth it. It's got to go somewhere. Single yeah. bite is going to be worth it's it. It's got to go somewhere. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it has got to go somewhere. <laughs> All that new data that we've spent months working on, uh, it needs to live somewhere on your hard drive. Yes, yeah, so it doesn't take up a ton of space. Um, if you need to make room for it, then uh, it's dead easy to do on the cross media bar. And uh, simply for uh, uh, 360 owners, uh, you'll get the title update first, and then you'll need to go to. Um, uh, marketplace to get the rest of it okay right so another playstation question um in a recent episode of crash tv episode mm-hmm. two which last week's uh, you had a feature on the ps3's custom soundtracks will you be able to play music from a playlist stored in the music section of the cross media bar mm-hmm. or does burnout just play every single track stored on your hate uh, disk drive can you clear this up because i've got an awesome burnout soundtrack in my head <laughs> <laughs> that's from cameron brewster aka carboy cam Right, cool. That's a good question, actually. Um, unfortunately, the uh, well, uh, 2.4, which is out very soon, uh, uh, which is the uh, operating system version that we use on the PS3, doesn't actually support um, playlists with custom soundtracks in games. So uh, you're going to have to select the uh, individual tracks that you want to play. Unfortunately, but we hope, and we've, we you know we're lobbying Sony, obviously, to uh, introduce that functionality later. So once we have it, then. Uh, I'd like to think that we can then go and retrofit it back into the game with a, in one of our later updates that we're hoping to come out. Uh, uh, obviously, we've got Codename Cagney coming out on the 10th of July. Then Davis's uh, Nights and Bikes. 
uh, and then future versions are going to be coming out in, as we uh, continually update and evolve the game through this course of uh, a year of paradise so uh, once that functionality comes through to us then uh, I'm sure we'll add it so mm-hmm. at the moment playlists aren't supported um, but hopefully in the future they will be well it's like one playlist I guess you've got at the moment that's right, yeah. <laughs> the, the one that you make, yeah. yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's cool. So if you wanted to see actually uh, how custom soundtracks work, then obviously you can go back to uh, episode three of uh, Crash TV mm-hmm. and uh, one of our audio guys gives you the lowdown on exactly how we've supported custom soundtracks in PS3. Mm-hmm. Uh, so check that out. Okay, Xbox question now. This one from Lynn Sabo, which says, Hi Criterion Games. At the moment, I'm a silver Xbox Live member, and at the moment I don't want to pay for Xbox Live Gold. So, will I be able to download all the DLC that you'll be producing? Um, uh, also, when will the new videos of motorbike gameplay be released? And are you going to be posting any images of the new island map? Well, I can answer the next two. Okay. The last two. When will the videos of motorbike gameplay be released? As soon as we can, and as soon as we're happy to show some of the stuff. Because uh, we're still kind of working on bits and pieces. We're iterating. <laughs> of the day. Um, so when we're happy that we've got something that really is worth showing, we'll put that up. So we're, uh, you know, but obviously before they comes out in Davis, uh, posting any images of the New Island map. Eventually, again, one of the things as you saw from uh, the footage that was uh, in the podcast two weeks ago, uh, the island's still being worked on. There are still big areas of the, the map that are literally being constructed right now that are nothing more than um, checkerboard sort of triangles and polygons and stuff like that. So once the gameplay gets locked down once all of the roads the jumps and everything obviously we'll we'll get the maps out there from from that absolutely and on the first question yes you can as a uh, silver xbox live member you can download the uh, new updates Mm -hmm. right okay fun stuff that came to the mailbag Uh so i've got an incredible thing which we're going to hand up put up in the podcast room we we did put it feature it uh, on the site quite a while back but uh, it's something we were incredibly proud of and we wanted to sort of uh, uh, feature it here in the podcast room because it was really, really nice. Was what we did was we got a, um, a letter sent to us from Brad Knoll in Fond du Lac in uh, WI, which is Wisconsin? Wisconsin. That's right, Wisconsin in the USA. And what he did was he actually sent us a Dodge County Sheriff's uh, Department badge um, as a little sort of uh, token to say, you know, burnout team rocks. Fantastic. Woohoo, woohoo. Thank you. Um, so what we've done is we've actually had it framed up now, but I'd say we're going to be hanging this in the podcast room, and we also, uh, everybody will know that we actually did send uh, Brad uh, a nice package of uh, uh, burnout swag, and that's actually winging its way across the Atlantic right now. But, but I thought Fantastic. I'd just put that up. Actually, Matt, would you like to... Uh, Can I yeah, this one? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 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 magic hands. Oh, you can be magic hands. <laughs> Nice. No, that's very, that was really exciting. I mean, I remember when it came mm. through, uh, we were all, we were t- really excited because it's a it's a tradition um, uh, amongst uh, amongst the different uh, sort of police departments, isn't it, to mm. trade badges when they meet. That's so right. uh, that's a it's a wonderful uh, honour, I suppose, to get the Dodge County Sheriff's <laughs> patch. <That's really> cool. <laughs> so get it framed, get it up in the podcast room. Brilliant, Indeedy. Yeah. So right on to the next bit. So in terms of postcards. We sent, said a while ago, you send us a postcard, we'll send you one back. We've had some postcards. Great. So, the first one is from Bergen in Norway, from our friend uh, Zandu from burnoutaholics.com. Now, go on then, gentlemen. Fantastic. Okay. That's great, isn't it? What a great... Uh, that's, uh, that's some Zandu, yes, obviously, um, uh, one of our uh, associated fan sites, actually, which you can see on um, uh, criteriongames.com. I haven't actually been up to Norway, but uh, what a beautiful place. Mm-hmm. It looks like a rickety old cable car to me, though. <laughs> cool. Okay. All the way now from Skagway in Alaska. <laughs> wow. There you go, Matt. You oh, can do that one. <laughs> Privileged. Oh, Very right. good. Yeah. So. You want to read it out? Picked this up while on holiday. Uh, waited till back home to post it. Apologies for it not being very interesting. I, oh, I think it's very interesting. But most of the postcards I found just said Alaska. <laughs> Sadly, there isn't even a game shop, let alone a copy of Burnout. Roll on, Cagney. Not long now. Good stuff. Fantastic. So Skagway in Alaska. Wow, looks beautiful. Yeah. Now, from Skagway in Alaska to not so sunny Team Side. Here we go. <laughs> Hang on, I'll see if I can manage this one. Well, right. Okay, there we go. Now, this one is from uh, Nathan, who goes by the name of uh, Floor313. And uh, he's, he's, he actually mailed us in this spectacular picture of Tameside. There we go. 
Not so sunny team, so. No, exactly. <laughs> All righty, super. Good so, stuff, so they'll go are. up on the uh, podcast wall. Indeed, yeah, which uh, is now starting to fill up, so uh, yeah, we're going to do that. And anyway, we'll start talking about our mugshot wall in a moment when uh, we come back and we talk about competitions. Great. Crash TV. Competition. Right, competitions. Okay, so... As we said last week, what we're trying to do is go around the office and get a lot of Burnout Paradise swag out of the office and into <laughs> your hands. Please. So, um, what we did do was we, uh, we ran a little bit of a competition, first of all, and the competition uh, was for uh, those of you out there to send us your uh, favourite three mug shots, and we said we'd feature them here on the, uh, on the podcast. And I think this is going to go down well. If we can get more mug shots, we'll continue doing this feature. So, up for grabs this week was the very attractive Matt would you please this, uh, that's, Burnout that's, Revenge ladies calendar that's right yeah so a uh, very limited edition uh, version of a calendar that was created for Burnout Revenge uh, in uh, 2005 and 2006 mm-hmm. uh, so uh, this is uh, this week's prize this week's prize and I say this was goes to the our first winner of the mugshots competition uh, which is Harrison Laycock or Harrow 500 and actually this is what Harrow 500 actually looks like Ah, mm-hmm. Scary. Scary. <laughs> and his his three uh, three mug shots that he sent us are these wonderful ones here. So in uh, no particular order, uh, we've got uh, Rubeo JP who has spent eighty one hours fourteen minutes online, and he's uh, say done seventy seven online races, none of which he's actually won. Oh dear. Okay. Well, Codename Cagney is going to help you out, I hope. It's not always about winning. <laughs> it's not yeah. always about winning. It's about your mark shots. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And uh, this one here is one that he took of Piedu, uh, who has spent uh, 553 hours online and has over 11,000 online crashes. Wow. That's, That's a impressive. decent ratio. <laughs> Yeah, and this one, well, he's got the most questionable um, <clears throat> uh, gamer tag I think I've ever heard of. He spent hour, nine hours online, um, has got actually 386 smashes, wow. 120 out of 120 billboards, owns three cars, and his uh, PSN ID is big fat something. Yes. Wow. So somebody who's very close to uh, getting all the discoverables in the game, not far off on jumps and smashes, and obviously they've got all billboards. And uh, needs to go and get some more cars, I think. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, very cool. So, Harrison, we're going to be uh, signing the uh, the calendar, and that's going to be heading out to you um, very, very soon. Do you want to just well, recap on. the rules of that competition? Oh uh, yeah. So, what we said with uh, with this competition is basically get your best three mug shots and uh, send them to us, and then we'll go into the mailbag and pick out at random uh, uh, one to one to feature. Brilliant. And what I'd like to do, actually, was we had a lot of PS3 um, entrants this week, mm-hmm. um, because really, you know, say PS3 does actually make it very, very easy, but it was really cool to see some um, Xbox 360 uh, entrants. So next week, what I'm thinking is we, we go Xbox 360, and what we'll do ah. is we had, as I featured last Face week, plates. the limited edition 360 nameplates that were... Uh, there at the uh, launch back in uh, 2005. Oh, that way around. Yes. <laughs> um, so we have three of these. So what I'm looking for is mug shots from Xbox 360 owners. The What we'll do is we'll dive into the mailbag and find three Xbox 360 owners that send us some mug shots. We'll feature the mug shots in the same way and then we'll get these sent out to you. So, so there you go. Mailbag at CriteriumGames.com. Yes, indeedy. Good stuff. Yeah, get us your, uh, get us your mug shots. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, some, there's some pretty good ones this week, but uh, we want more. Indeed. So, the other thing as well, we had a competition for competitions. <laughs> yeah, we did. Okay, right. So, what we're going to do is our first competition for competitions was, uh, where are we now? Uh, yeah. yeah, this one here uh, from David Wartman. And his competition said, Hey guys, just watched the new Crash TV episode and instantly came up with an idea for a competition. How about if you hold a competition for the most dramatic wreck? Right. So. Sounds David, like a really good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> David, we're going to get you some burnout swag for giving us that idea, because that's one of the things as well. If you get us a competition idea that we run, we'll send you some swag out there. But what we're going to do also is we're going to run the competition. And what we want to do is next week, we'd love to see the most dramatic wreck. Now, whether you want video evidence or photographic evidence... That's uh, a burnout paradise wreck, burnout no real paradise. one. No, no, oh no. God, no, 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 please. 
drive right. safely out there. He's not talking about showtime, is he? Is no, he even? It's no, about it's about you know those sort of places where you've ended up up a tree. Stuck, I think you've seen yeah, some spectacular ones. Haven't they've you? started that in the forums already. I remember seeing a video of someone crashing into a power park, perfectly parked. So oh wow, what a great wrecked look. on the screen. Yeah. Well, that would be a good one to choose. Cool. So yeah, that's. Up there at the moment, yeah. I reckon. <laughs> I would say if you can get video to us, we'll we'll stick it in the po- podcast. If you get uh, get f- uh, photographic proof, whatever. But anyway, the best wreck I figure what we're going to do is we're going to get ah. this incredible large, super oh. sized. Hang on, it. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm actually going to have to do the opposite of what I normally do. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, yeah. So what we'll do is we'll get this all signed up, and that will go to the person who sends us the. Hang on. Where's Matt? Um, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, send, sends us the, uh, the the evidence of the most spectacular, most out there uh, rep next week. And again, it's one of those things that if the competition keeps on running, we'll we'll make it a regular regular thing. So that's a great yeah, idea. There we go. Yeah. So David, we're going to send you some some swag. Um, best uh, best rep gets that gigantic poster. Looking forward to those. Indeed, yes, and yes, and the other thing as well is postcards. We're still running them, so. If you send us a postcard, we'll send you one back and send it to criteriongames.com at Onslow House, Onslow Street, Guildford, Surrey, GU1, 40N in the UK. England? UK? England. (laughs) Absolutely. We've got that one down, Pat, haven't we? Uh, Indeed, yeah. (laughs) We'll iterate that one. Yeah, I think we should. (laughs) Uh, Thanks, Simon. So that brings us to uh, the end of episode four of Crash TV. we're going to see you all uh, next week. We'll obviously have some of our regular features. You're going to have a guest presenter next week because I'm not going to be here. No, you're going to be at home playing Cagney, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so you're going to have a guest guest presenter next week. I wonder who that's going to be. Maybe uh, we should uh, run a sweepstake on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, or maybe not. So, yeah, stay tuned. Uh, obviously, get, in, get onto iTunes. Uh, you can see what, what else we've been doing um, on CriterionGames.com. Send us a letter. Send us an email to mailbag at criteri- uh, CriterionGames.com. Mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see you all next week bye bye mailbag at criteriongames.com mail us at Criterion Games Onslow House Onslow Street Guildford Surrey GU1 4TN in the UK